very good morning this is jyotin my department of biology so today we are here to know and discuss about different agricultural practices so from that the first method is so first we look at agriculture tasks what are the agricultural tasks followed by farmers so the first agricultural task is preparation of soil preparation of soil is the first agricultural task and the second one selection of seeds selection of seeds is the second one and the third one is applying manure applying manure is a third one and the fourth one is irrigation fifth one is weeding sixth one harvesting seventh one storing so just now look at here what is the first one preparation of soil and the second one selection of seeds supplying manure irrigation weeding harvesting story so before if you have to cultivate something you must and should first of all need to make soil prepared so for that what we do in a preparation of soil in a preparation of soil first we plow it later we level it okay that again i'll explain next after making soil ready then we have to select the seeds whether they are good or bad got it your good seeds are to be chosen and next applying manure what manure whether it's a natural or a artificial next to provide nutrients to the plants next irrigation providing water for the crops next weeding weeding me unwanted plants are to be separated from the crop and next harvesting cutting off crop and storing so these are the methods followed by uh, farmers to cultivate the crop then we look at the first one preparation of soil okay preparation of soil how they prepare soil number 1 plowing number 2 leveling plowing and leveling so plowing first of all we look at about plowing plow for example if it is a soil with the help of the reversal j shaped or you can take like this the shape j j shaped plow is present whether it is wooden one or iron one wooden one the nail is only one but for the iron one there are 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 eight nails are present for iron one so this plow 
basically use it for plowing the soil. What for they plow? Basically here, like this. They dig the soil with the help of plow is like a nail. So that nail insert inside of the soil and they slowly start plowing. Mean nothing but tilling. So when they are tilling the soil, the internal parts come out. So basically why they plow the soil, what is the reason? They do it in June, month of June, after the festival called Eruvaka. I already told you what is Eruvaka. So, in the Eruvaka festival, the starting period of the uh, crop cultivation, they simply, first of all, they plow the soil properly and they remove the extra wastage which is present inside of the soil. Because uh, pre previous year, what roots left over inside of the soil will come out after the plowing. So first reason why they plow off. First reason to loosen the soil for loosening of soil. Number two for removing extra additional roots or some other unwanted plants. And the third thing some harmful uh, insects or microorganisms they lay eggs inside of the soil. And to bring out those insects and those eggs to outside. Because if they plow it out due to the sun rays, the decks may die and next there won't be any problem and trouble for the crop. But if we won't till it properly, then what happens? Those insects and all be inside and after the crop production, when the time of crop production, these all insects start attacking on crop. That's the reason we have to plow the soil. And the next reason to penetrate the roots inside, deeper inside, they require the proper space and the aeration as well as the soil should be loose. But that is the reason for proper growth of root and for proper aeration and for proper holding capacity for different purposes, we plow the soil. Got it. After plowing, the soil may be ups and down. So to avoid this ups and down, again, they level the soil. What they do it? They level it. So plowing is done by a plow. Leveling is done by leveler. Leveler is present which has a spade like structure like this. Which helps for leveling the soil. And plow helps for plowing. Got it? So this leveler makes soil equal. So there won't even, after plowing, some lumps of uh, soil may be present. That lumps of soil also break down by this leveler. So this leveler makes total area level. Because if, for example, uh, in agricultural land, one area is, for example, one area, it's too high, the other area too low. Then when you are giving water, the water only utilized by the lower areas, not by the upper area. Then... The upper area plant doesn't get proper water and nutrients and the growth rate also not be proper. If you look at about the next one, due to the overlagging of water, they also may die. That's what, if soil is equal, because here in our India, if you have one acre of land, they make one acre of land into four or five parts division that they are called uh, madulu or kayalu. So for example, if it is one acre of land, this one acre of land, as per the height, as per the uh, height condition, they separate and they divide into madulu. 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, 6, like that as per their uh, convenience, they divide. So each and every madi should be equal height for all plants to grow. Is it clear? So make it that equal, who will help? Leveler, help, le leveler helps and so that leveling is required. Leveling is required for uh, what it say for breakdown of lumps of soil and also to make the soil leveling is it clear so this is about plowing and leveling next the second one is selection of seeds
selection of seeds what is a selection of seeds sowing second one is sowing but in the first we have to select the seeds before going to sow the seeds why we have to select the seeds for example if you look at some of the seeds are large in size some of the seeds are small in size and some of the seeds are damaged some of the seeds are healthy so to look at which seeds are healthy for that they choose a method called selection of seeds after selection of seeds they sow it in soil is it clear so now just listen so basically for this uh, they take some of the seeds and uh, they choose a bucket or a barrel in that barrel the seeds which they have chosen they choose some seeds for example like here i am choosing maize okay maize seeds maize and the corn nothing but so now before going to check the seeds quality and quantity i take 3 by 4th of water in a uh, what do you say uh, in a bucket or in a bowl or in a barrel and in that the seeds which i am taking that all i pour in it when i pour all those seeds in it the seeds which are good enough and healthy and uh, which are in proper size proper weight all that sunk inside of the water all that deposit inside of the water and which are not good all those start floating above the water so which are damaged or eaten by uh, other insects or something will start floating above the water and which are good seeds all these come and deposit bottom of the water is it clear so this is about selection of seeds so here the which are upper they all are damaged they remove that all damaged part and uh, inside seeds they tie it in a cloth and they keep it in a dark room after the after from a seed if a small sprout emerge then the seeds are so inside of the soil if not nowadays what farmers are doing all these methods they are not doing it they are directly taking the seeds and some company seeds they are choosing and uh, that seeds they directly sow it after plowing they directly sow that in soil and they close it then this is about seeds which we sow like chili uh, sorry chili nut uh, like cotton maize for these crops but when you look at about tomato or uh, uh, for uh, uh, one more thing chili and rice wheat then for this for this the another method is followed so let's we look at what are that methods so basically they choose the seeds even in chili or some other they choose the seeds and all these seeds before going to sow it they make ready of the soil so how they make ready of the soil for example this is one acre of land in that for example they made it into four parts just imagine one acre they divided into four parts then for one acre of land they won't sprinkle for over all the land just they choose some part of the land for example this is a part and before going to sow the seeds they sprinkle they completely fill it with the water they irrigate it they provide some water for it got it after provisions of water what they do it provisions are not not like well, very much just simple some amount of water is provided later into that soil they broadcast seeds seeds broadcasting like with a hand they sprinkle they sprinkle the seeds only into this area got it and they leave like that and later they provide some uh, manual for it or uh, they regularly irrigate it then they grow into up to certain height after growing into up to certain height they pluck all the crop all the plants and they tie aside 
and again it, it may take one month like that after that the remaining whole area they fill it with the water and they make the soil completely proper condition later the plants which are grown here they take as a bundle they tie it and later they replant it by giving proper space for their growth they require proper space right for that they give proper space and proper uh, uh, width length they all look at and they replant it this is called replantation the plant has grown in some certain area the huge amount of huge number of plants are grown in an area and later they remove all those and they replant it this is called replantation generally the replantation is possible for chili tomato and uh, wheat rice for this majorly they go for replantation is it clear dear so th this is about uh, sowing and uh, replantation sowing under directly we sow the seeds not a big not a big deal but for right rice wheat uh, tomato chili for that we can't re uh, we can't sow seeds individually it's not possible it takes long time that's what what they do it they replant it they first they grow in a certain place later they pluck all those and they replant in different areas so this is called selection of seed sowing and also replantation this is under come to after replantation what they do it next that is the matters so we look at next Applying manure. Manure here, natural manure and artificial. Both. We look at both. First, we take natural. After, we look at artificial. First, we take the natural one. Later, we take artificial one. Okay. So, first, applying manure natural applying manure what they apply natural so first of all they take in first compost if not vermi compost compost or vermi compost if not they take one more panchagavya if not green manure so making compost vermi compost panchagavya and green manure by these four methods naturally we can apply manure to the soil so how they use this compost vermi compost panchagavya green manure just i will tell you right now just listen to me okay so we look at compost first of all compost is nothing but uh, basically uh, every farmer has both sides two coins what well, so two sides of one coin what is the two sides of one coin nothing but a farmer compulsory they have crop field along with that animal husbandry 
So basically they have cows, buffalo at their home, most. So the excretory waste part of animals, they store it or they decompose it in area and the food which they provide for the animals, remaining leftover food and nothing but grass, leaf litter, along with the dung, they take a pit, in that pit all these materials are poured inside and they live like that for some days. When it goes decomposed for 70%, uh, later they dig it and they transfer to the, they shift to the crop yard. This is one method of composting. Composting. In a pet, they decompose dung and leaf litter. That is to only 70%. Got it? The 70% material is decomposed. Then, what what materials in compost? In a pet, they are dung and leaf litter. These two, they add in a pit and then decomposes for 70%. Later, the decomposed 70% material is transferred to the crop yard. This is one method. If not, the another method is the vermi composting. In vermi composting also, they take pit. What they take? They take pit. Vermi compost is nothing but the compost which is made by earthworms. That is called vermi compost. So, this vermi compost is basically used how it is used the very simple method so here there we took only dump right here they take some amount of soil loose soil is filled there after that they pour they put a dung material here down after they fill it with a cocoa peat Cocoa peat, coconut uh, fiber, they add there, that's what I'm writing here, coconut fiber. After again, upon they add some amount of dung there, with slightly they sprinkle soil. And upon that, they leave some earthworms on that, they leave earthworms on that. After they cover it upon with the gunny bags or maybe uh, banana leaves or some other leaf litter on that and they sprinkle every day sprinkle water. So the way they left earthworms here, they left earthworms upon the layer, right? So these earthworms slowly starts feeding on the dung and it excrete. Feed on that, excrete. Feed on that, excrete. Like continuation they move from one layer to another layer to until ending. So once it enters into until ending, the this area until there it excreted, that area of whole soil become like this. The dung becomes like this. It won't be like smoother. So it become like a curdles. This all they extract. Then what will happen to the earthworms, madam? They go deeper inside. That's all. Nothing more than that. Okay. They go deeper inside. That's all. And from the upon, they take it and they sieve it. There will be a machine, sieving machine, on that they pour this uh, vermi compost and they sieve it. So remaining leftover earthworms and their wastage, everything they bring back and they pour in it and they take that vermi compost and they fill it in bags. So 250 kg, sorry, 25 kg is. 450 or 500 cost is about okay and uh, next what what they do with the, that earthworms again so until then the earthworm number increases then they increase the pits and in same procedure soil dung coconut peat again dung upon that little amount of soil and uh, uh, leaf litter are not banana leaves all these they fill it Again, they leave earthworm. So, it, this process continues and they produce vermi compost. Then, what is the use with this vermi compost? Vermi compost is highly rich in nutrients. Got it? Highly rich in nutrients, which gives uh, uh, support for the plant growth. Understood? And next, panchagavya. Panchagavya preparation is very, 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 very important. And this very simple process also. So, just for the panchagavya, pancha. Five things are required. What are they? Cow dung, cow urine, 
cow ghee, cow milk, cow curd. What they add? Cow dung, cow urine, cow milk, curd, ghee. If possible, you can add coconut water and banana. Additional. And all these we have to add and need to mix it well properly. First of all, you need to take a dung. In that, you need to pour urine. Mix it properly. Again, add milk. Mix it properly. Again, add curd. Mix it properly. Again, add ghee. Mix it properly. Yeah, some people, they add jaggery also in that. Jaggery bellum. And uh, properly, need to crunch it and pour in it. Again, mix it well. And for that, need to take a barrel and with the help of stick, we can mix it. And again, need to pour coconut water and uh, bananas. Uh, ripened bananas, just crush and add in it. Mix it well. And cover it with a uh, cloth and leave like that for one day next second day open it again mix it again close it like the process continues for 11 to 15 days after 11 to 15 days your panchagavya will be ready that panchagavya they filter it properly and they fill it in bottles one liter panchagavya is used for 10 liters of water so for 10 liter of water one liter enough and the 10 liters we can sprinkle almost 5 to 6 acres almost ah oh, that's it 5 to 6 acres can be 5 to 6 not possible but 2 to 3 acres can we can then how this uh, panchagavya is used dung provides nitrogen phosphorus all those and uh, uh, jaggery provides iron and iodine milk curd and all these whatever the nutrients magnesium zinc calcium copper iron iron whatever the nutrients all these required all are provided for the plants by adding of this panchagavya manure. And next, last and final, green manure. What about this green manure? Very simple. Grow any crops which have fiber more, like gongura, nothing but red sorrel, or leafy vegetables, if not uh, jute plants. So they grow it and until certain height. After, they replow it inside of the soil. Yes, you heard very clearly. I'll again repeat it. They grow until certain height. They replow it again into the soil. They leave like that. It happens in summer majorly. They do it. So, because of that, what happens? When you leave the plant like that, the whole body decomposes properly and provides proper nutrients to the soil. And in that soil, if you grow other plants, they get proper nutrients. And here, for the manuring, here we also can follow one more method that is crop rotation. So, one year, one crop, another year, another crop. For example, this year you choose the rice. Next year, choose uh, groundnut and again rice. Like, change the crop, then also the nutrient replenishment takes place in soil. Then, what about artificial nutrients? Artificial nutrients are basically, which are used by farmers, is nothing but here there are different but uh, we don't have time enough now so we will I, I'll, I'll tell you about the artificial chemicals which are used for running manure is a uh, simply I will tell you that is urea they provide urea and potash and NPK NPK nitrogen phosphorus potassium these urea majorly used artificial manuring and NPK, nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, potassium and potash. These are the major artificial manure chemicals, sorry, artificial fertilizers are used to give, uh, to replenish the nutrients into the soil. But this may cause damage to the soil because chemicals kill useful bacteria also. When you look at about the compost, vermicompost, panchagavya, green manuring, they help to improve the healthy bacteria and good bacteria which keeps environment uh, healthy and soil nutritional. So just go for the natural manuring, not for the artificial. Got it? So students, we will discuss about the remaining topics later. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye students.